Hello and welcome back to the TVBinges.com Pilot Roundtable, a Southgate Media Group podcast. I'm Kyle Tremblay, the editor of TVBinges.com, and I am joined as always by a fellow TV Binges writer. She's got Jay-Z tickets but can't find a babysitter. It's Olivia Richards. Hello. Hey. Oh, looking forward to that Jay-Z show. Oh, always, always. The big Jay-Z show in 2015. Uh, today <laughs> we're talking about a comedy that I can assure you exists and is currently airing on NBC it's truth be told olivia what did you think of it it's oh my gosh well i remember when i first saw the premise and i was cringing Mm -hmm. and then i watched this and that cringe just became like a full-blown just shudder that wouldn't end for a good 30 minutes double cringe (laughs) oh god this was i don't know how it's possible to have a show that's supposed to be about like political correctness and self-awareness without actually being politically correct or <laughs> <laughs> yeah i that's, feel like I'm, actually, I'm impressed yeah no i i feel like we're really now we're, we're into the stragglers of pilot season you know we had all the premieres happen up up front in premiere week and now within uh four days of each other we've had dr ken and uh, and now, truth be told, premiere. And I feel like we're, we're, we've really reached the point where networks are releasing the comedies that they're embarrassed by. And NBC should absolutely be embarrassed that this show made it to air. This is this this things went badly here. here. And, this was uh, just. Yeah. I mean, at least I can give credit to Dr. Ken of like it just was objectively bad. Right. But you know what? Like it could have been worse and like we're all kind of hoping that you know the characters were likable enough that you know maybe it just should have like tuned a few things up this was just painful from everything you know from the characters to the content to just everything about it was so off center and just tone deaf yeah no you're right and i shouldn't i shouldn't besmirch the mediocre to bad name of dr ken um, in service of talking about Truth Be Told. Because because the, the, Dr. Ken's biggest sin is that it isn't funny. Like that, and that, that is a common sin among pilot, pilots. And, I mean, it was, it was... That show I would describe as painfully unfunny, but it is not the same as this. This is, like, actually embarrassing. Like, I'm embarrassed for the actors. I'm embarrassed for the network. I'm embarrassed for everyone who's involved with this show. Like, the crew the writers, the showrunner, like everyone who put this on air, I feel bad for them because they did a really bad job and the public watched it. And that's, it's embarrassing. I mean, I don't know what else there is to say about the quality of this show. It's, it's, I mean, I guess I get into the premise, which if you haven't guessed, (laughs) yeah, it, it, uh, uh, I mean, it's called truth be told. And so, ostensibly, it's about the real truth, truths of, of what we're really thinking, but are too scared to say. And so, the show is going to really get into it. And, um, and so, there's a lot of, quote-unquote, politically incorrect jokes, I guess, that are designed to, to point out politically incorrect thoughts that we have. But, oh, who boy! <laughs> it doesn't I get just, bad. I, like, I've never... I'm really concerned that the writers of the show are like the producers or everyone involved. I'm like, have you ever spoken <laughs> to anybody just ever? Like, have you ever had a human conversation? Because I've heard like politically incorrect conversations are ones that were like bordering on, if not completely controversial. But this wasn't any of that. Like this <laughs> was just. Because originally, I think the show was supposed to be called People Are Talking, and people oh, good. were certainly talking, <laughs> but it just, it wasn't about anything relevant in 2015 or necessary that really needed to be heard. There was no, like, poignancy or anything that, like, isn't just a stereotype or not even a, a well-thought-out stereotype, if there, if, like, if there even is such a thing. Yeah, this was... There was no nuance to it, I think is what you're saying. There was exactly. there, none whatsoever. This was a, like, a bad local comedian's stand-up show, like, in front of a brick wall. 
and like 10 people in the audience. This was that converted to a half hour sitcom. Um, like, for example, the cold open is our, our two heroes, one of which is uh, poor Zach Morris, man. Poor Zach Morris was <laughs> saved by the bell, stuck on this show. Um, but it's him and uh, so it's Mark Paul Gosselar and Tone Bell. Um, and the cold open is them questioning the aut- authenticity of the uh, the the maitre d's Chinese accent at a Chinese restaurant, and uh, and that's a that's a source of of boy do they ever mine it for comedy <laughs> because because the authenticity of accents is really something that's a hot button issue right now, and then we we go on to the aforementioned Jay Z show, um, and look. <laughs> As, as someone who has mentioned a few times my, my deep love of hip hop music, uh, and and I I don't mean to be smirched the good name of Hove, but in 2015, maybe Jay Z wasn't the go-to reference for the concert you're going to. I, I'm just saying, like he's he's now like in his late 40s. <laughs> and maybe maybe this family shouldn't have been super excited about a Jay Z con- Jay Z concert. Maybe it should have been like a Kendrick concert or something. But... Oh right, and like yeah. just everything about it. I'm like, you know, you know, it's kind of a rough show when you forget what year it is when you're watching. Right. Like, because you know they have them singing in the car, like Alicia Keys and. Oh. I'm like, okay, that song came out, like, five years ago. Like, I remember, you know, singing that still in high school. I'm like, that's not quite relevant at this point in time. And they have, like, they make the joke where, yeah, he was listening to the John Mayer CD in the car. Yeah. John- I'm like, this, none of this, it doesn't have any standing in, in what's happening right now. Like, you know, just appealing to the, the young generation. And Nobody just has listened <laughs> to a John Mayer CD in a decade. No. <laughs> John Mayer now is like wearing cowboy hats and like doing like faux country music. No one cares about John Mayer in 2015. No. And yeah, you're right. Like, and that car scene, by the way, was in service of what I would call the big comedic set piece of this episode, which is our two heroes arguing about whether the white guy can rap the N-word, which is literally a stand-up comedian bit, like a hacky stand-up bit. Like, that, that, is, that is such well-trotted ground, ground, you know, like, like that, that, that idea of whether white people can, can sing along with rap songs. is like, yeah, I've heard that a thousand times from, like, not even stand up comedians from like people at the office have that conversation. <laughs> like, right? Like the the guy who thinks he's funnier than he actually is at the office, that's like that's his wheelhouse, <laughs> that kind of conversation. And here it is. It's Zach Morris and some other guy talking in the car about it. It's like it's like that that's your show can't be that. That can't be your joke on a TV show. Like like a, a, a TV show that had any awareness at all of pop culture in 2015 the joke would be making fun of that joke. Like, and that's kind of how I felt about everything on this pilot. Like, this is a pilot that it would that would exist in a much smarter show as something that, it, that has been made up to be made fun of. Like, this is like, like in Community or Parks and Rec, this is the show that would be on in the background that the people on that show are making fun of. <laughs> like, oh, exactly. I think that's a really good point. Yeah, this is, it's just like, yeah... I mean, it, it, this this show could have existed as written in 2005. Like, there is there is literally nothing about this pilot, not a single line of dialogue or a single idea that 10 years ago would have felt even the slightest bit out of place. <laughs> and that's that's really, like, it just pervades everything about this. And, and I mean, of course, to top it off, it's just, I mean, dumb as a stump. Like, there there is... For for a show that was trying to hang its hat on being edgy or whatever, this is as unedgy as it can possibly get. You know? Oh no, exactly. And like I, I find that that's more often the case than not. Is like you know these shows that kind of come right out and just say like, oh, we're trying to push the boundaries or like be subversive or you know here's like the points that we're gonna make where you know two guys sit in a room and you know that's how the world works nowadays. With the exception, I think of the Carmichael show because at least that approached it in a really smart poignant kind of way and had that self-awareness to make it work and the comedy to back it up but with this it's like there there, there was no plot 
like that was it like the entire show like right out of the gate was just it's going to be a group of people who talk about how the world works without understanding how the world works well and that's even that's even i think you're giving it too much credit it's it's two man children who are talking about how the world works which is another like bad comedy staple is that the show is about a man child who who behaves like an 11 year old but is somehow being passed off as the hero and in this case it's it's poor zach morris who is like, he's less... Mark Paul Gosselaar's character in this show is less mature than the actual Zach Morris, who was, like, 14 at the time of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, he's our hero. You know, and he's he's this guy who vacillates between um, being very upset when the valet mistakenly thinks that he... It, that the Porsche is his instead of his black friends and makes a scene out of it. And in that scene, he is being portrayed as, I guess, heroic. And then two scenes later, he is stringently arguing that he should be able to rap the N-word. Um, and so this is the guy we're rooting for on the show, apparently. And I just, I, I can't imagine a universe in which anyone would think that he's, like, someone worth investing in and, like, wanting to succeed or even having fun, like, being like, oh Zach, you know, like it's like there's there's just none of that. He is he is just the kind of person that no no like well adjusted human adult would ever hang out with. Oh no, exactly. And you know the fact that that entire scene with the babysitter where he's like, oh, oh. my wife is ethnically ambiguous. Like, oh. you don't know what nationality your wife is. First and foremost, <laughs> of a problem. <laughs> Also, it doesn't matter, but yeah, he's like, oh, people are going to think I'm going to have a type because, like, both of them are ethnically ambiguous, like, for Asian cheekbones. I'm like, how (laughs) someone think these words and then sit down and put them down on paper and then make that into a show that costed money to produce? I don't understand. (laughs) People spent money on, people spent time on this. I mean, this is, yeah, like... That whole subplot at the end, or I guess it was the plot of the episode, is that it, it revolves around Zach. I don't know his character name. I'm just going to call him Zach. It Morris. doesn't matter. <laughs> Zach is so wildly unprepared that the babysitter he hires is attractive. Like, he is, like, most of the comedy, the quote unquote comedy, is mined from him just, he can't even deal with the idea of an attractive babysitter. And then, of course, because this is the show that hates people, uh, uh, his, his, his trusty sidekick uh, dis- remembers that he saw the babysitter in porn. And so the back half of this episode is, is basically a serial-style investigation. But trust me, if, if you think that sounds fun, it is not. But an investigation into whether the babysitter has done porn. And it's like, Wow. Like, the, the, aside from the implication that, like, all attractive young women have done porn, <laughs> apparently. Yep. Um, it, it was so, like, just not even, like, worse than painfully. It was cringingly unfunny. Like, like physically hurting how unfunny this was. And and it, it, even, like, their laugh track or studio audience or whatever they had, like, even they didn't sound like they were enjoying it. <laughs> like, no, that's like, the thing. Yeah. If, like, if your overdone laugh track sounds like yeah. it, you know, is having a rough time, then, yeah, you know something. Oh something's a little gosh. off. Yeah, this was, this is a show that I, I can't understand how it exists. And the funny thing is, and I, I want to briefly touch on this, which is that, NBC already did the smart, funny version of this show, and it's called The Carmichael Show. Yep. And The Carmichael Show ha- is the same sort of thing. It's put a bunch of people in the room and have them talk about race and equality and social issues. And The Carmichael Show was uh, – and, and it, it's uh, been ordered to a second season against all odds, which is fantastic news. But that first season of Carmichael Show was – like smart and incisive and specific and the characters were real people. And it was also above all really, really funny. And it was dealing with issues that are hyper current. And that show felt so 2015. That show feels like it would have, it would have been telling the future had it been released six months ago, you know, and it was released like three months ago. Like that show felt hyper current. Absolutely. And this show just feels like, like a relic. Like I, like it, 
I'd be hard pressed to find a, a TV show that premiered that instantly felt more dated. And the fact that it airs on the same network as the Carmichael show is just a tragedy. Like it's a, it's a real, like, it, like if NBC wants to be more socially conscious, they need to pick better than, than whoever, 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 whichever genius came up with this because yikes. That's, that's a good word for it. Just, Yikes. Just no. No. Just yikes and and no. Well, you know, you and I, Olivia, we're not the only ones who said yikes to Truth Be Told, because this show did a 0.7 rating with 2.6 million viewers on NBC. And uh, it, that is a rating that is still more than it deserved. But even though it was a Friday night premiere, that is still woefully low. Um, and for good reason. I can't imagine any of those uh, 2.6 million viewers really want to see more of this world. So Yeah, probably not. So, okay, canceled quickly. Will it make it through the season or be renewed for next season? Oh, this is going to be canceled quickly. Like so, I have no doubt. <laughs> this is our slave. This is our first one where the ratings, the quality of the show, the fact that no one like big is headlining it. Um, they all coalesce into a canceled quickly. This is our first like slam dunk canceled quickly, I think. And it was, it was rightfully so. Other shows, I was like, okay, like, if it stays on, like, I wouldn't be devastated. Like, I would have hoped for better. But with this one, I'm like, if this doesn't find its way off of the airwaves, I will be very sad. Yeah. This this should have been canceled, like, ten minutes into the pilot. Like, the NBC should have just, like, switched it out for a Law & Order rerun ten minutes in. <laughs> um, all right, so it's a formality, but final verdict, thumbs up or thumbs down on Truth Be Told. Oh, big, big thumbs down. Yeah. Uh, was this your worst pilot of the season? You know, that's hard to say, but I think this took every other really awful thing that we've watched and made it to the top of the list of things that just should yeah. not have ever been shown to people. Yeah, like, we, I mentioned Dr. Ken earlier, and you, you, you rightly pointed out, like, that's a different level of show. Dr. Ken is just a failed show. This is a tire fire. This is this is <laughs> the local garbage dump has been set on fire, and uh, and this is what popped out in the smoke. <laughs> like this is this is just a a catastrophe on every possible level, and hopefully it, it maybe makes it one more week at most. But uh, two thumbs down for me as well. All right, on that happy note, uh, <laughs> you've been listening to the Pilot Roundtable at TVBenches.com and Southgate Media Group Production. You can listen to all of our episodes on iTunes, where you can rate and review us. We appreciate that. Or find us at SouthgateMediaGroup.com. Follow Olivia on Twitter at RichardsOlivia and me on Twitter at KyleLovesTV. Until next time.